Grandpa, look at this drawing of batteries. Big ones, small ones, different shape. But I don't understand something. You say energy can't be created or destroyed. So how do batteries store energy? That's an excellent observation, Mel. Batteries don't actually store energy in its pure form. They are more like energy translators. They store energy by transforming it into chemical energy. Chemical energy? Like in my food? Very similar. Just like your body stores energy from food as chemical compounds, batteries store electrical energy as chemicals inside them. When you need the energy back, the chemicals react and release it as electricity. But why do we need so many different types? This car battery is huge compared to the ones in my remote control. Think of it like water containers. You use a small cup for drinking, a medium bucket for washing your bike, and a large tank for watering the whole garden. Different devices need different amounts of energy, so we need different sized energy containers. That makes sense. But what happens when the sun isn't shining and the wind isn't blowing? Can batteries store enough energy for the whole city? That's one of the biggest puzzles energy engineers are working on today. Individual batteries are great for small things, but storing energy for entire communities requires creative solutions. Like what? Giant batteries the size of buildings? Actually, one of the cleverest methods uses water. When we have extra electricity from solar panels or wind turbines, we use it to pump water up to a high reservoir. It's like lifting a heavy bucket above your head. And then when we need the energy back, we let the water fall down? Exactly. The falling water spins turbines and generates electricity, just like a hydroelectric dam. We are storing electrical energy as gravitational potential energy. It's like having a giant natural battery made of mountains and water. That's so clever. And are there other ways to store energy? Well, you're looking at one right now. That thermos stores thermal energy, heat. Some power plants store energy by heating up special materials like massy stones or molten salt. Molten salt? Like melt table salt? Similar idea, but special types of salt that can get much hotter. When we have extra solar energy during the day, we use it to melt these salts. At night, the hot salt can boil water to make steam and generate electricity. So it's like storing sunshine for nighttime. But what about the batteries in our house? How long do they last? Our home battery can store about one day's worth of electricity for our house. If our solar panels make extra electricity during a sunny day, the battery saves it for evening when we are cooking dinner and doing homework. But what happens during a long rainy week like this one? when our solar panels can't make much electricity? Good point. That's when our house connects to the electrical grid, the network of power lines that connects everyone's homes to power plants. When our battery runs low, we can buy electricity from the grid. And when our panels make too much, we can sell it back to the grid? You understand it perfectly. It's like a giant energy sharing network where everyone helps everyone else balance supply and demand. And what happens to batteries when they don't work anymore? Can we fix them? Most batteries can't be refilled like a gas tank, unfortunately. When the chemicals inside are used up, the battery is dead. But the good news is that almost everything in a battery can be recycled. The metals, plastics, and even some of the chemicals. So dead batteries can become new batteries? Many of their materials can. It's like taking apart an old toy to use the pieces to build a new one. This is especially important for large batteries in electric cars 
or home energy systems. Speaking of electric cars, how far can they go on one battery charge? Modern electric cars can travel 300 to 500 kilometers on one charge. And is there enough electricity to charge everyone's car if we all switch to electric? That's a question many energy experts are working on. We would need to produce more electricity overall, but electric cars are much more efficient than gasoline cars. Plus, if we time the charging right, cars could charge when solar and wind power are producing lots of electricity. Could electric cars battery help store energy for the grid too? You're thinking like a true engineer. Yes, some people are working on that idea. If millions of electric cars are plugged in, their batteries could help store extra renewable energy and give some back to the grid when needed. So cars would be like rolling batteries helping the whole energy system. Exactly. It's called vehicle to the grid technology. Your future electric car could help balance the electrical grid while it's parked. And I notice our house lights are still on, even though it's cloudy and rainy outside. Is our battery working right now? Let me check. Yes, our battery is providing about 30% of our electricity right now, and we are getting the rest from the grid. Tonight, if the weather clears, our solar panels might charge the battery back up. It's like our energy system is always balancing, like standing on one foot. That's a perfect metaphor. The entire energy system is constantly balancing supply and demand, storage and use, production and consumption. What new energy storage ideas are scientists working on? Oh, there are some fascinating possibilities. Some are working on compressed air energy storage, using extra electricity to compress air in underground caverns, then releasing it to generate power later. Others are developing gravity batteries that lift heavy weights up tall towers. Gravity batteries, like winding up a giant clock? Somewhat like that. When you have extra electricity, you use it to lift massive weights. When you need electricity back, you let the weights fall down slowly, turning generators as they descend. These scientists are so creative. It's like they're finding ways to save energy in everything, water, heat, chemical, gravity, even spinning things. You've understood something very important, Mel. Energy storage is about finding the best way to hold on to useful energy until we need it, while losing as little as possible in the process. Like keeping food fresh in the refrigerator so it doesn't spoil before we eat it. That's another excellent analogy. And just like we have different ways to preserve food, refrigerating, freezing, canning, drying, we need different ways to store energy depending on how long we want to keep it and what we plan to use it for. Will we solve the energy storage problem so we can use 100% of renewable energy? I believe we will, especially with bright minds like yours working on it. Each year, batteries get better and cheaper, and new storage technologies are being developed. The future looks very promising for clean stored energy.